welcome back to the basement. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are checking out another new locomotive that's just in from Lionel. It's sitting behind me here. It is the Greenbrier. Now, this is a fantasy scheme, okay? The Greenbrier never came in this chessy paint like you see here, but this is a really cool fantasy scheme that Lionel put out and fortunate to have it here on the channel for us to check out and run today. Now, this was from the 2022 Volume 2 catalog, so that would have been released in July of 2022, and the model delivered in July of 2023. Some of them are still hitting dealers this week and next week. They also have passenger cars that go along with this in the catalog. We'll show some photos of those. Those have not arrived yet. So today we're going to be just running the engine around. Maybe we'll throw some other passenger cars on there that don't match anything uh, just for the fun of it. But this is an XMTH tooling. So we're going to dive in and get a closer look at this. And then we're going to send it around the layout. So let's go check it out. All right. So here we go. The Chessie Greenbrier. Now the Greenbrier, as you can see here, it's a big 484 locomotive. This was built by the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad between 1935 and 1948. It was actually built by Lima Locomotive Works, and it was definitely one of those big, heavy northerns that was just a beast for the C&O. Now, a 484 is traditionally called a northern locomotive. The Chessie did not dub these northerns. They decided to call them the Greenbriars after a hotel in uh, the Greenbrier Hotel in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia. And there's still a Greenbrier that is around today. I believe it was restored to operating condition and then stored away. Uh, and so that one is also available in the Lionel catalog. But these are pretty cool. There were only actually 12 of these ever produced. So there, there weren't that many of them produced by the CNO, but they are pretty, pretty awesome. They've got some so these things apparently could go over 100 miles an hour. They they put out about 66,000 pounds of tractive effort. So certainly heavy, strong pullers. Now, let's talk about the Lionel version a little bit. As I mentioned, these were from the 2022 Volume 2 catalog. They, with the Jesse one that you see here, they cataloged a lot of traditional looking green briars and two different sets of passenger cars. So if you wanted to get the version that is restored in operating condition but has not been run from my understanding it's still in storage you could pick that one up i believe that's third or 1213 or 1214. there's also the blue and yellow chesapeake and ohio passenger cars that you could pick up or you could pick up the aluminum and orange cno cars to match this greenbrier here so this is an xmth tooling so what does that mean well MTH sold a bunch of toolings a few years ago. Lionel purchased them. Atlas purchased them. So Lionel purchased the Greenbrier. So there's some components of this that we would see on MTH engines and not normally on a Lionel engine. Like we have a drop plate between the cab and the tender. Really nice feature that MTH always has on their engines. Lionel usually doesn't put that on unless it's a Vision Line model. Now the L1 Mikados that were just delivered were also an XMTH tooling and they had the drop plates still as well. So that's really nice. Now. These do have legacy control, Bluetooth, they've got whistle steam, they've got stack steam, and the whistle is kind of cool because it's right here behind the stack, and I'll get, I'll show it in a little bit. The hole is actually underneath the whistle itself, so it does kind of come right up through there, but it is hard to see because it's so close to the stack itself. Now, the elephant ears or smoke deflectors, these pop right off, so when you're storing it in the box, these are not gonna be on. The other nice feature is when they perch the tooling and, you know, Put their own electronics in it they've made all of the control switches right up here underneath the sand dome so that makes it really easy to hit your run program switch you're not taking the lo locomotive off and flicking a button underneath so that's a really nice detail that they added when they retooled this for lionel so we've got a nice big tender on this thing as well these things are pretty pretty hefty i mean they are not short they require 072 curves they're a little over 21 inches in length so you know, you're going to need to have a big layout to run these things just because of these big drivers that you see here. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up and send it around the layout so you can see it a little bit. And we'll get some close-ups as well. It looks as though it's like corrugated aluminum. And Lionel said that it wasn't going to be. It was going to be painted in a way to look like it's corrugated. It is not. It is just painted stripes. But it does do a pretty good job of creating that illusion. So kudos to them. We've got really fantastic detailing here on the side. So we'll get video of that in motion as well. We've got a sliding cab roof. We've got a vent roof here on the, on the cab as well that we can move. Lots of separately applied details on this locomotive. And like we found on the Hudson, 
when you get something that has a different color boiler, like this one's got this nice orange paint, it really makes all those add-on details pop, which is really, really neat. So the front of this locomotive is really nice. It's got a really dark graphite smoke box there. So you'd imagine that that graphite would go back for the rest of the smoke box when it's covered up with the orange paint that this locomotive has. We have got a dummy coupler that swings out from here. So if you push in this side, you can swing this open. And there's a, a dummy O-gauge coupler here that you can have out. You've got lots of separately applied details, color cup bar there, the headlights down low on this locomotive. Great detailing here. We've got the bell up front, big number boards here and marker lights as well. Just really, really cool detail on this locomotive. So here you can see the gap between the cab and the tender. Now I pointed out before that this does have a drop plate. I'll have this drop plate up and then it'll end up kind of falling down. I think the, the drawbar might be just a hair too long for the length of the drop plate. Now my curves are 072 minimum. So uh, they're wide enough to run this locomotive, but when it came back around again, uh, the drop plate had fallen down again. So I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, like I said, it could be the drop plate just isn't long enough or the it's either that or the fact that the drawbar is just maybe a hair too long that when it goes around some curves, it can slide down and drop. So I did want to point that out. It's really, really neat to see. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up and run it around the layout.
So what do you think about this one? Another fantasy scheme. I know we've been seeing a lot and a lot of fantasy schemes, you know, recently. We just did the Hudson and now we're doing this one, but it's a really cool locomotive. And I think that orange really pops. It's super, super unique. It looks really great going around the layout and an awesome piece to add to the collection. Now, I picked this up for my buddy Landon at Berkshire Station. You can go to his website. Uh, you can check him out on Instagram as well. He was able to get this for me and uh, I couldn't thank him enough, Landon. Thank you very much. So if you are in the market looking for maybe a Greenbrier, it doesn't have to be the Chessy one. He has some other ones in stock as well. Check out Berkshire Station for that. Thank you all so much for watching this one. Go ahead and uh, leave me a comment with your thoughts on this. And we appreciate all of you. Have a great day and we'll see you on the next one.